What's up, everybody? It's Grim, your Wrestling Figures YouTube Heavyweight Champion. And I just finished watching WWE Hell in a Cell 2013, and I'm highly disappointed in the pay-per-view. Not because there wasn't good matches. The matches were great. The action was great. The workers put on an excellent show. I'm very disappointed in the booking. Okay, I'm going to start off with the Hell in a Cell match between Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton, okay? Pretty good match. Uh, these guys were beating the shit out of each other. It was, it was good. And then Triple H comes out, and, and the, the crowd starts chanting asshole, and, and I'm really getting into it. And this is where I'm going with this. Randy Orton won the match and won the championship, okay? But the storyline is building to where you want, as a fan, you want to see Daniel Bryan overcome the regime. You know, he's kind of got Big Show, who's fired, but he's on his side. And you got Shawn Michaels, who's on his side, but he's Triple H's friend. So you kind of see that heel turn coming. And and sure enough, HBK turns heel. Okay? He turns heel. He super kicks Daniel Bryan. And then Orton gets the pin and gets the win, right? I mean, when HBK goes down from the bump and Triple H comes into the ring to check on Shawn Michaels, you know, and and then you see Daniel Bryan getting ready to hit Triple H with the knee, and he hits Triple H with the knee. Well, sort of. It was kind of a thunder shot. You know, he, he kind of missed it. But I, I'm going to forgive the botching, you know. Daniel Bryan hits Triple H with the knee, and Triple H goes down. The crowd was on their feet. They really thought Daniel Bryan was going to do it. He's going to overcome Triple H. At that point, I would have had the Big Show come in the ring, you know. Shawn Michaels super kicks Daniel Bryan. The Big Show should have came in the ring and poof, knocked out HBK. Another ref could have slid in. Daniel Bryan could have pinned Orton and, and been the new champion. But no, they just... Let Daniel Bryan lose, and everybody in the audience boos. I, you know, we're fans. You know, we're happy when the good guys win, and we're mad when the bad guys win. That's what we're supposed to do as fans. Now, you know, you want to sit home and, and root for the heels. You like Randy Orton? Good for you. If, you. if you're happy for him, good for you. I'm happy for you. I, like I said, you, bad guys have to win sometimes. But in, in this Daniel Bryan storyline, the bad guys have been winning for the last six weeks? Eight weeks? I want to see the fucking good guys win! I want to see the fucking good guys win! I want to see the fucking good guys win, you goddamn motherfuckers! <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> <sighs> Alright, um... So, I was mad. Good match, though. I'm not saying the pay-per-view sucked. I'm saying the fucking results sucked. So, anyway, um... John Cena won the World Heavyweight Championship. He beat Alberto De Rio clean in the middle of the ring. I'm not opposed to John Cena winning the world title... Would have liked to seen a little bit more excitement out of that match. I mean, it was a good match, but it was just clean. One, two, three. I like insanity. You ever watch GTS Wrestling? I like fucking chaos! I want to see chaos in my matches. I want to see twists and turns and ups and downs and holy shit, you know? Like, I want to see a clean match once in a while, you know? But I, I thought something should have happened. Not just, you know, Super Cena returns and Super Cena overcomes all odds and Super Cena wins Alberto Del Rio, beats Alberto Del Rio, and wins the world title. Because, how many times have we seen that before? It's John Cena's MO. It's all what he always does. I want to see something fucking different! I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, um... But John Cena wins the world title, and I don't know where they're going with that. Everybody thought Damien Sandow was going to cash in. Never saw the motherfucker. So, oh wait, we did see Damien Sandow. We saw him on the pre-show. Uh, he beat Kofi Kingston. Holy fuck, he actually beat Kofi Kingston. And Damien Sandow's been jobbing like a motherfucker, but he beat Kofi Kingston. Good match. Nothing really else to it. Um, AJ... She retained her women's title, or her Divas title. I always call it the women's title. She retained her Divas title over Brie. And I for fucking sure thought that Brie was going to win. And I'm surprised she didn't. Quite honestly, I'm surprised. Decent match. And, and Brie actually uh, ran into Nikki at one point and kind of knocked her off the apron. And they might be building towards a uh, Bella Twin split or something like that. So that could be interesting. Los Matadors beat the Real Americans in a pretty decent, entertaining match. The fucking bull is epic, people. I love El Torito. This guy is fun. He's bouncing around. He's kicking the shit out of people. He's funny. Los Matadors are colorful. I want elite figures of them. Will I get them? No. We might get basics a year from now. What a waste! But I don't know. Uh, 
Dolph Ziggler said nailed it on the pre-show. I don't know if you caught that. That was pretty cool. I popped for that one. The tag team match was fucking phenomenal. You had Cody Rhodes and Goldust defending against The Shield, Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins, and The Usos. These guys fucking went all at it. First of all, in a move that I call a stupid plex, which is a superplex off the top rope, but to the outside... I call it a stupid plex. They did a fucking stupid plex. It's like one of the first times I've ever actually seen a stupid plex done for real, not with action figures. Uh, they, you know, they got caught by the other guys that were in the match, the other four guys in the match. They got caught, so they didn't actually slam onto the floor because they would have died. But it was really cool to see a, a stupid plex. And it was really cool to see Goldust and uh, Cody Rhodes win and retain the belts. I want them to win. I want them to retain the belts. Fucking excellent match. So, wasn't disappointed with that whatsoever. Which then brings me to... The Great Kali. The fucking Great Kali was on a pay-per-view? Why was the Great Kali on a pay-per-view? Him and Natalia teamed up against Fandango and Summer Rae. Summer Rae's first match! Holy shit, a blonde shaking her ass in the ring. Okay, sure, everybody's happy. But you want to know what? So what? Summer Rae pinned Natalia and... and, and Fucking Great Kali! <laughs> Feud of the year, Fandango vs. Great Kali. They've worked each other a few times. I've seen it. I've been paying attention. And uh, so that was the culmination of their feud, apparently, that they finally got Summer Rae into the ring. And I'm sorry, but that was a match for superstars or for main event on Wednesdays, I on TV. Not a fucking pay-per-view that I just paid $55 to watch. Curtis Axel was hurt, so Curtis Axel couldn't fight. He couldn't defend against Big E Langston. So on the pre-show, they set up Dean Ambrose versus Big E Langston. And you know what? I predicted, right, you can check the comments, I said that Big E Langston was going to win, well, sort of right, I said he, Big E Langston was going to win by DQ. He was going to win the match, not the belt. He won by countout, not a DQ. They're close. Almost nailed it. But you know what? Uh, a good outing by Biggie Langston. I think his mic work on the pre-show was fucking awful. He was like, yeah, come on. You want to you wanna fight me? Uh, yeah, let's come on. Uh, I'm a rookie? Let's fight. Okay, sure, let's do it. Fucking awful mic skills, Biggie. Come on, man. I'm pulling for you, kid. I want you to do good. I want you to fucking kick ass and be a top guy. Fix those mic skills. It was bad, bro. Seriously. Uh, Dean Ambrose is always awesome, so, you know, I was happy to see him keep the U.S. title, I, I, I didn't, I kind of thought they were going to put the IC title on Big E, so it kind of puts a kibosh on that, and they weren't going to take it off Dean Ambrose tonight, so why take it off Dean Ambrose tonight? So they didn't, and then, um, Bray Wyatt and The Miz, I told you something was going to happen with them, they didn't actually have a match, because apparently Bray's injured and couldn't work, so, uh, The Miz challenged Bray to, a fight, because that's different than a match, and then, because Bray couldn't fight, he sent out the other two, uh, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, Harper and Rowan, and then they started kicking the Miz's ass, and then, who comes to his rescue? By God, it's gotta be Kane! Yep, Kane came out, so, Kane's back, hopefully I'm not forgetting anything else, because now I want to talk about Ryback and CM Punk. Now, they made Ryback look like a bitch, and Paul Heyman was supposed to be in that match, wasn't he? But it made no sense because as the match starts, CM Punk comes in and Ryback comes out. He's in the cage. And then Paul Heyman rides out on a fucking cherry picker or a scissor lift or whatever the fuck you want to call it, right? Rolls out. They raise him up and he stands on the fucking top of the cage for the entire fucking match. He stood on top of the fucking cage calling down to fucking Ryback in the fucking ring. Uh, Ryback, do this. Ryback, do that. What the fuck? You were supposed to be in the match, you fucking Polaris Walrus fat fuck idiot. What the fuck was he doing? I don't know. Uh, so anyway, then there comes a spot where there's a table, right? And the table is set up, and then CM Punk hits Ryback with a low blow, and Ryback's like, Oh, my nutsack! Oh, my nutsack! Oh, my nutsack! Hold on, let me just lay here on this table to recover, because my nuts hurt. And then CM Punk <laughs> fucking elbow drops him through the table. And then give them the GTS and it's over. So now, Paul Heyman, thinking he's safe up on top of the cage, CM Punk, what's he going to do? Uh, take one guess. He climbs out of the fucking cage. Climbs all the way up to the top. Oh, wait, first, he shoved a kendo stick in his underpants. Yeah. So he basically shoved a stick up his ass. Climbs up to the top. There's Rybutt. I mean, uh, there, there's Paul Heyman. Standing on top of the fucking cage. And he whips him with the fucking stick. He's, I'm gonna beat you with this stick. And that's what CM Punk did. And then Chance Best in the World and his music played and it was over. A lot of people on Twitter thought that I was being negative and saying it was awful and it sucked and it was the fucking worst. And I wasn't trying to be negative to say it was awful. And it, I just, 
I thought the booking sucked. I wanted to see the fucking good guys win. I wanted to see Daniel Bryan win. He's like my fucking favorite guy right now. I don't hate Randy Orton. It's just he's been a seven-time champ. I've seen him champ plenty of times. I want to see fucking Daniel Bryan for crying out loud. He deserves it. He's fucking epic. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching, guys. I know it was a little long-winded. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe for more. I'll talk to you guys again soon. I really thank you guys for watching. You guys truly are the best, and I appreciate every time you watch one of my videos. Nailed it. Team nailed it for life.